Hi everyone, New Sente here. Today we'll be covering a quick video covering the question of, well, how do bows work? Now, this may seem like a silly question because as archers, we obviously all know how bows work. We do, right? No, really, we do know how bows work, how well we explain it, well, that can vary. Now, this video is aimed primarily at people who haven't ever used or held a bow before. So, this simple stick and string may seem like very alien technology. And in fairness, because most people haven't used bows and don't use bows today, that knowledge is quite easily lost. The other group of people who might find this interesting are people who are trying to portray archery in their work, whether it's in written form or in visual form, and might have some misconceptions about how a bow works. And perhaps by learning more about uh, archery and how bows work, you might also allay some of the concerns and fears you have about archery if you intend to try it. To make this even simpler, I'll explain the concepts using this fiberglass youth longbow. At the very core of archery, you're using a stick and a string. This isn't meant to be a derogatory way to describe traditional shooting. You are quite literally using a stick and string. So if you remove the string, what you get is a straight stick. That's essentially how the first bows were made, by getting a stick or a branch, uh, putting some twine or natural fibre, bending it and having a bow. Again, in simple terms, the original shape of the stick or the bow stave is what the bow wants to return to. So by putting pressure and flexing the bow, it will return to its original shape when you let go. So by adding a string, and putting the bow under tension, we store a lot of potential energy in the limbs, as the limbs are now under tension and the bow is constantly trying to return to its original position. The string is stopping it. And of course, if we remove the string, the bow will return to its original position. So there is constantly a force acting on the bow to try to push the limbs forward. That's the basic function of a bow under tension. Now, of course, by just having the string on the bow, it doesn't actually do anything. To launch a projectile from the bow and therefore stab someone over there, we need to do something with this to initiate the opposite reaction, according to Newton's third law. So what we then do, of course, is to knock an arrow and pull the bow back. And doing so will put the limbs under more tension. The key is to watch the position of the limb tips. That movement and letting go is what will cause the arrow to launch from this platform. Now again, because the string is in the way, the limbs will not go further to its original starting position, but return to its brace position. And that movement of the limb is what generates the energy to launch a projectile. Hence the conversion of potential energy to kinetic energy through the limbs and through the arrow. Most non-archers who look at a bow will think that the energy is stored in the string and that's a very wide misconception uh, it's often uh, perpetuated in video games where you might have to upgrade the string for more power you actually want to change the materials and the limbs not the string the reason why people think this misconception exists is because of slingshots with slingshots the power comes from the band so the elastic band is held in place by whatever frame is used such as the typical y-shaped fork um, or modern uh, carbon fiber or metal frame the frame itself doesn't move it's the band which stores the energy whereas in a bow the string doesn't store the energy the limbs do it's the limbs that move and generate that power in the shot, not the string. So when people think about uh, holding the string and letting it go, their afraid might snap back very much like a slingshot, which actually isn't the case. That is why slingshots and bows have very different definitions and different functionality. They basically work in opposite ways.
basically if the frame is static and the energy comes from the elastic properties of the band it's a slingshot the bow relies on the spring or the lever effect of the limbs pushing forward and therefore pulling the string forward to launch the arrow now that's a very simple explanation to go even further we have to think about the shape of the bow and the materials used now we said before that the bow wants to return to its original shape when unstrung and that can be quite extreme in some cases and in many cases both in real life today and in history people have misunderstood the shape of a bow uh, an example of this a rather mild example is this uh, Ming uh, Chinese uh, recurve bow um, this to many uh, Westerners when they first discovered Chinese bows um, they thought well the bow is curved this way therefore put the string here and we'll pull it back this way and many bows are broken because it's actually the opposite the bow curves the other way uh, and this is an example of a very recurved bow so pay attention to the shape of the bow that's the unstrung or unbraced uh, shape so this is the shape after bracing and as you can see it's a much different shape compared to what it started from so the limbs are under more tension and this is a light bow if this was a heavier poundage then there would be much more energy stored in the limbs but as it is right now there is energy stored in the limbs and if we remove the string the limbs will return to its original position with force and of course by pulling it back further and further we place the limbs under even more tension and it will snap back once we let it go and that's what makes the bow work if we go back to the English longbow uh, this is the bow unstrung now I mentioned in a previous video um, I left this in a hot room strung the wood has set it can be reversed by the way um, thanks to those who suggested the steam room and the heat options uh, but this is what the bow shouldn't look like when unstrung now this will still function of course if we uh, string the bow uh, the shape hasn't changed that much but do bear in mind to operate the bow we are pulling it back on the string so by pulling it back you'll see the limbs will curve and then they will spring back when we let go so it will return to this position once we let go now the problem with the limbs or the bow being pre-curved is that it won't go back to its straight position so it will return to its brace position but because it won't go any further than that because the wood is set the bow will have less energy and less velocity compared to a bow which is perfectly straight or curved even more that's the reason why having the wood sit like this is highly undesirable um, for a bow and that's why you should unstring your bow because you do risk this loss of energy now again with modern bows modern designs modern materials the loss will be less pronounced but the traditional bows and designs are far more susceptible to this sort of damage um, if you don't properly take care of it so illustrating a bow like this uh, with a curve without the string the bow will still function because you are pulling it back further and putting the limbs under more tension but it won't be as efficient or as powerful compared to a properly designed bow so if you're illustrating a bow without a string, then you might want to consider uh, what the shape might be uh, before bracing the bow. Now, the other important thing to consider is the material and make of the bow. Now, you can technically make a bow out of any straight stick or branch. The reason why you can't do so easily is that you need to pay attention to the qualities of the materials that you need now for a bow to properly function it needs one side to be shaped or made from materials that are functioning under compressive forces and one side that flexes so in this case for the english longbows it's a d shape one side is under pressure which is the uh, belly the inside of the bow facing you when you pull it back that's under compressive force which the other side will flex now if you just take any regular branch and you bend it backwards it will snap the bows which are designed to be bows from the right materials and shape will not snap if you uh, draw it back to the correct length so when people pick up a bow often they're afraid of it snapping it actually won't snap because 
these bows are designed to flex in the correct direction. Now, if you do it in reverse, it will snap. But if you do it in the right direction, it won't. It's meant to be drawn this way. So if you're sighting archery, you don't have to be afraid of the bow breaking apart in your hands. They're actually designed to be drawn back to that length. Now, the exceptions are uh, if you're using certain uh, traditional bows and certain traditional materials, you may not be able to draw back all the way. Now, we talk about primitive archery. Like if you were in the woods and you grabbed a big branch or a sapling and tried to make a bow from it, you might have very limited length because any further, the stick will snap. That's why you see um, people who do primitive archery making um, bows from natural materials in the woods. Not proper like bowyering, but just getting a stick and string quite literally. Um, you see them shooting with like a quarter draw or half draw at most because they can't pull back any further than that. Um, that's a limitation to materials. But with the proper selection of materials or combination of materials, you should be able to get the proper compression and flexibility to have a, a functioning full draw bow. To summarize, a bow functions by wanting to return to its original position before being braced or strung. By pulling the string back further and further, it puts the bow under more tension and therefore the limbs will accelerate and return to its starting position. The energy in the shot comes from the energy in the limbs, not from the string. Anyway, hope that clears a few things up. This is New Sensei. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.